I know what you're talking about. We've all been there. But I think everything begins with the character of God. And that's why Jesus on earth is so important, because he's the only picture of God we have. You know, we can all speculate and think if there is a God, he would do this. Now we know. Yeah. Now we're, the word became flesh. And so now we know how God acts and we know his heart. Mm. And I think a lot of times we do go through seasons like that, that we're not hearing. It seems like everything's going wrong. What, I, I, I think everybody's gone through no stuff doubt. like that. What, what have you done through times like that when it's just like the heavens are brass and that God's nowhere to be found? Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything begins and ends, at least from my perspective, with the character of God. Uh, if God is small and if he's hard hearted, uh, then I don't have any hope. Yeah. But if God is immense, uh, if he always has been, if he has never not been, if, if before all of this was, he already had always been, we don't have a concept for it. But if I can open myself up to that, and then, and then character number two, if I can believe he's merciful, that he's kind, that he knows what's right, he knows what's right, um, that doesn't make pain easy, but it can make pain bearable. And it can give our pain a purpose. Because if I believe that there is a God who can, and I believe there's a God who will if it is right, uh, all of us have stories of, of when we've wrestled with this. For me, my first story like this was the death of my father. He had just retired. He had dreams of touring the country in an RV. He was an oil field mechanic, just the happiest guy you'd ever want to know. A uh, real robust, healthy guy. And, and he was diagnosed with ALS. I was in Brazil at the time. I was a missionary. I'd never heard of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And as you know, it's a, it's a crippling uh, degeneration of, 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 of the muscles and nerve endings. And, and with, well, by the time I went to Brazil, and the first time I came back to visit him after six months, he was a shell of a man. Mm. Yeah. And I can remember, I grew up in West Texas, and I can remember go out, going out in the, in the oil field in the middle of the night and standing by a tank battery and just yelling at God, just yelling at him. And, and I guess part of me was thinking, look, Lord, I gave up my, yeah, mm. here, I'm a missionary. Right. <laughs> I'm a missionary, right? right? You've got to heal my father. You've got to heal my father. And God did not heal my father. He did not heal my father on this planet. See, I think that's it right there. He healed him in his presence. My father who hears this conversation, your folks who hear this conversation right now saying, oh, we're healed. We're healed. Oh, my goodness. Don't think for a second that God didn't answer every prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I know what you're talking about. We've all been there. But I think everything begins with the character of God. And that's why Jesus on earth is so important, because he's the only picture of God we have. You know, we can all speculate and think if there is a God, he would do this. Now we know. Yeah. Now we're, the word became flesh. And so now we know how God acts and we know his heart. Mm. So to finish that story um, with my dad, I was still mad at God at the funeral. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, a gentleman came up to me at my father's funeral. And uh, I didn't know the child, didn't know him. Uh, but I later learned that he would make weekly visits to my dad. They'd been co-workers. And um, my, uh, the gentleman told me that day in the church, he said, uh, watching your father suffer with dignity led me to Christ. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Now, you would have loved my dad. You would have loved him. But he never preached a sermon. Well, he did once, and he hated it. <laughs> he, was a, he was a happy guy, but he wasn't outgoing in, in, in the sense of discussing matters of faith, but he'd do anything for you. But something about watching my father suffer with dignity was a sermon enough to lead that man. My goodness. Now, now this is out of my pay grade. I don't know why God did not heal my dad. Of course, as my father is saying, Max, he healed me, but I don't know why he didn't heal, heal him here on earth. Like Lazarus. Like Lazarus, like Lazarus. I do know that the heavenly father wants to win souls. I know he wants to populate heaven. Wow. I know his goal is not my comfort, 
but it's to populate an eternal kingdom because he's going to reign forever uh, with on a renewed earth, restored earth with us, and we're going to be there with him. And he wants as many people as possible to be there. Could it be that he said, Jack Lakato, I need two years of suffering from you to win that man's soul because I've been trying everything else. I don't know, please. I'm being very careful here because I don't know. And I sh the last thing I want to say to somebody who is listening right now, sitting in a wheelchair or going through a cancer treatment, I, the last thing I want somebody to say is, you're telling me that I've got to be a sermon to somebody? I don't know. I've learned long ago as a pastor, I, I, I don't have all the answers to suffering. I do believe that God is great and I do believe he is kind. So I believe he loved that man. And I believe my father, knowing my dad, that he would say, I would do that to save that man's soul. You know, to, for that man to have this for eternity. Okay, okay. So uh, sometimes uh, God heals on this planet. He will heal everything in his presence. So the purpose of the Lazarus miracle was not so that Lazarus could live forever because Lazarus eventually died, I think. <laughs> I mean, I've, you and I have been to that Israel. Be There's weird. nobody over there named Lazarus who's 2,000 years It'd old. It'd be a tourist attraction it if would. it would, man. It would. <laughs> I bet we would have met him, right? <laughs> somebody would have arranged a TV in interview with that guy. <laughs> Surely. So all Jesus did was... <laughs> All Jesus did was, I'm trying to be serious. Yeah. Tell me about Genghis Khan, Lazarus. What was he like? <laughs> you derailed. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love doing this to you. Seriously. Am I as red as yeah. I feel? No, you're good. But all Jesus did was extend his life, right? Yeah. He, he just extended his life. Uh, the ultimate answer to all our prayers is going to come in heaven. Now, I, I'm, I'm not going to... Say, I think Jesus can do anything he wants to, anything he wants to. There is nothing. He, he, can, he can vacate a, a cemetery today. I believe that. Praise to his name. He is that mighty and he is that strong. Uh, I believe his priority is winning souls. I believe that's, the, the, the healing of the body is wonderful. The healing of the soul is everything, yeah. you know, exactly. and so that's it. And we'll, we'll all have our bodies healed. Yeah. We will. Uh, when we're uh, raptured into his presence or when he comes to this earth, uh, our souls will be reunited with perfect bodies. All of those questions are going to be answered. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.